Today we're very pleased to have Andreas Kayash from UMass speaking on geometric Eisenstein stress. Yeah, thank you for uh, the opportunity to speak uh, and the organizers. Um, and yes, yeah, so the so the title is uh, geometric Eisenstein. Uh, and constant term of this. All right, so um, the idea uh, is we want to consider uh, some form of uh, parabolic induction. Parabolic induction for uh, D modules. D modules on on G. Okay, so here, uh, all right. So here, so let me just fix some notation. The G is a reductive group. Uh, which is over some algebraically closed field K, characteristic zero. Okay. Zero. Um, and for the future, we're also going to fix X, so which is going to be a smooth uh, projective curve. So it's negative. Over K. All right, so, so the relevant diagram here that we want to consider it. So we have uh, the moduli. So, so sorry, inside uh, G, we also want to take some parabolic subgroup. G is a parabolic subgroup. Um, and inside E, we have uh, M, which is a is, is a levy, and we also have its unipotent radical, which we're going to write as the P. Okay, and so uh, the relevant geometry that we're going to consider here, the relevant stacks, is we're going to consider the moduli stack of E bundles on the curve X, and this Admits two maps, one to the moduli of N bundles on X, and the other one to moduli G bundles on X. Call this map here Q, that's P. Okay, so this is just induce a P bundle to a G bundle and just take a few bundle. Okay. Um, and so now recall. That uh, look at high not on M. This is in bijection with I run of M. So fix uh, an element here, get a corresponding uh, U, you know, the bun corresponding next uh, component bun of U. Okay, so now I'm going to say what this uh, functor of, of Eisenstein, which is a form of parabolic induction from uh, M to, to G, I'm going to say what it is supposed to be. Um, but I'm so it, it, I'm going to say why it's not actually uh, obvious that it's defined. All right, so find Eisenstein. Is there? I you and this go from oh, we go from two modules one 
and you to keep my phone from going to so explicitly what this is, is it's just going to be full push along this. So we're going to use uh, the shriek function to push and the, the star pullback uh, to pull. It. So this is going to be P or shriek opposed to Q star. All right, so, so this, it's not obvious that this is actually defined. So in general, in the theory of P modules, we have a, a lower star functor and we have an upper shriek functor. Um, and the, this lower shriek is the partially defined left adjoint to the upper shriek. And this uh, upper star is the partially defined left adjoint to the lower star. Okay. Um, so if P were, for example, proper and representable, then this would be defined um, but in this case, it's not actually. So, so actually Q, Q over star, so this is defined uh, since Q is smooth. So in that case, it's just a shift, but for shakes, it's actually okay, but, but this one, this one, Unclear why lower shriek in this. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, if this was, so I'm going to just for the moment pretend that it is defined, and I will show later that it is, in fact. Um, but so if the shriek is defined, it's Right, adjoint. Is so is what we call the geometric constant term functor. So this is C P over star mu. And it's just so we just go the other direction. So that's gonna be um, Q lower star and then super shriek. Okay, so it's the geometric constant. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so, so, I, so I did, I should have fixed it. Why do you, why do you fix it? You know, like, I thought maybe you were going to do some shifts. Um, yeah, so I mean, okay, so you can get a, a, a functor on, on all of one M, uh, just by taking the direct stuff. So the issue actually appears, um, yeah, so we're also going to talk about I is lower, so the, the, the star version of Eisenstein series, and that's going to have a left adjoint. Okay, and so the direct sum of like this, so I star is not gonna. So let me, let me not get into that. And just add it to Yeah, for, for now, I just want to talk about this. Yes, sorry. Yeah, so so mu is just a free image of uh, uh, Sabanti, so mu is just a free image. So this is so uh, we just think this is the geometric constant term. All right, so, so part of the motivation for this, a okay, motivation for this is uh a recall uh, geometric the global geometric. Langland's uh, correspondence. Uh, 
So it's supposed to, so it's an equivalence between uh, D modules on one G and incoherent keys uh, with real potency similar support on the stack of local systems for the Langland solution. Okay, so you can ask, so on this side we have, uh, we look at corresponding diagrams for local systems. So you can pull push and push and sheaves along this diagram, um, and this should correspond to so pull push here goes to I three, which is just defined to be the direct sum. All these eyes uh I should use is it star starball from yeah. I think it's actually shriek shriek or whatever. I guess it's probably a little different to the that's why I have shoes going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I don't but anyways, it's a it's a, it's it's sort of a, an operation which is sort of clearly defined, but it, it's it's not necessarily obvious that this is defined. And again, I'll, I'll get into that. Um, so later we'll also see. So a second motivation for studying and the functors is uh, you have Hecate functors acting on this category of modules, um, and you want to produce Hecate eigen keys uh, for those Hecate functors and I'll mention later that a, a sort of variant of this functor will can, can do that for you. So, so that's the second motivation. I'll get to that again. Um, so how do we actually see that this functor is well defined? So the issue that I already mentioned is that projection map is on P moves G is not proper. So okay, so I actually why why I fix the move will show up in just a second. Okay, so this is not proper, so so Right. Yeah. So this is not so P lower shriek is not necessarily also. Um, so the fix for this is to construct some relative classification. It's going to be this stack one thing tilde, and it's going to map one thing to the new, and it's going to map one B, and this is going to be a proper proper uh, plus representable map. Um, and one P, uh, one P is gonna embed in here as a dense open sub stack. Um, and this, the, the, this triangle is here, I'll call this that uh, token. So yeah, okay, so if I didn't I didn't pick some new, I, I removed new here, this map wouldn't necessarily be, would actually not be proper. Um so but it is proper on that's connected. Any questions? Does that fix the problem? Uh so if you restrict oh what why why this introducing a relative? Yeah, I mean, the first map is not your factor. The first map is yeah. So, so yeah, so I'll get there. So this, so 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 the first step is to introduce the compactification, um, and then uh, it has to do with the 
a property that so you can push the constant g forward along the sort of embedding, and that is going to be going to have a certain acyclicity property, which is going to allow us to define this, this map. All right. So to define this one p tilde, uh, the first step is so define d mod n p bar. So this is going to be a spectrum of global sections of functions on d mod n p. Okay, so recall that uh, n p was the unipotent radical of my parabolic. Okay, so uh, this is the affinization of this quotient here. So this is actually um, an affine scheme of finite type. So this is a affine scheme of finite type. And the natural map you want N P mapping the G mod N P bar is an open embedding. So this is the theorem of uh gross Actually, does anyone know is there an S after it says it gross <laughs> There definitely is. Yeah. It's, it's a plural S. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so um, just to describe this quotient a little bit more explicitly, so, um, so an S is some arbitrary math and scheme a map so take a map this uh, affine scheme g1 and p bar uh, which factors generically through the, the open embedding g mod np here so we have a generic factorization so such a map is equivalent to uh, a Drinfeld flicker structure on the trivial G bundle on that. So I'll say, I'll say what that means. This is uh, so this is the equivalent to collection. So let's just say all finite dimensional representations of G um, and injective half of E. We take the invariance to tensor with O S. So an objective map of O S modules. So for all V, you have such an objective map um, satisfying the following conditions such that one, you look at, so you look at uh, this map for the trivial representation V, this should be the identity. Two, take any map representations, E, W, uh, we can consider the following diagram, the invariance for P, answer with functions on 
S. S. Half a W this alpha tends to be the identity. And here again, alpha tends to be the identity of the variance. And this should remain the identity. And there's a third condition as well. So the third condition is we can look at the following. So it's just saying if you sort of tend to be W and look at invariance, but the natural diagram again you can do this. S is the identity here. Here we have W. You can look at invariance to the tensor product. So this this diagram here should also be. Okay, so so if you can write down a system of maps or uh uh every representation like this satisfying these conditions you get a point of uh, e mod n d bar and as long as that these maps here are objective uh, generically the map will factor through uh, the quotient of g by n g construction Actually, I can define this can kind of take So define application, but build up. I mean, let's say what it is. Let's sort of explain. The notation is that we look at uh, maps in X into this app and enclosure, but we take a, a, a quotient on one side by G and on the other side by M. So part of this is saying that um, the natural actions of G and M on this quotient extend over the type to the Yaka enclosure. You can look at a, a mapping space and curve this double quotient. Uh, and this condition here is saying that we require that our, our map factors generically through uh, the classifying space of G. Right, so the classifying space of E is well you can think of it, right? So it's just E mod N E mod M mod N E. So you cancel and this is that it is a You know, do the broad and base theory. Well, actually, the construction of this, uh, I guess, is due to Grinfeld. So, I think the first proof of the theorem that I'm about to state appeared in the book. Maybe. Sorry, just one small yeah. comment. I think the definitions, there's just some subtlety here, right? Which is like the set, so much you say generic, it's like it means like it's an open subset such that the um, intersection with any fiber over the base. So that'll be like X, like tensor to some 
geometric point or whatever is is dense. So some sort of scheme there, I think, dense yeah. to, uh, to oh, base. Yes, I guess it should factor. There should be some domain. You're saying like, like yeah, a like it's a it's, it's a relative kind of domain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I don't. You want me to write that down? No, I just wanted to mention yeah, yeah, it's not exactly. It's not just generic. It's like a little bit stronger. Sure. Yeah. 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 So this. Thanks. Okay. So so the theorem is that so there's a natural map, right? You can obviously project to um, point one t. So natural map from p tilde and p. So calling p tilde is uh, so. I take some mu here. It's schematic proper. Okay. So in particular, what that means for us is that uh, we can push p modules forward. Uh, whenever you, again, whenever you have those uh, schematic and proper map of algebraic stacks. Lower streak is defined, and it's actually equal to the upper star. Okay, so now, so I guess you could, you could sort of ask what happens. So I have a question. Yes. Um, is it? Very clear, and this is something that I, I'm. I, I mean, I, I I've seen the the theorem's proof. Um, <clears throat> But I was wondering if there's a sort of reason that one could sort of eye this and expect that this map will be proper, whereas the original one is not. Is it just generally true that if one takes maps X a curve into some sort of double affine, double quotient of an affine space, then one expects that to be um, uh, relatively proper over, say, one of the quotients, um, as opposed to over over something like G mod U, which is which is an open subset of that. Is there is there is there a reason to expect the one to be proper not versus not at the level of stacks? Because it seems to me in general a hard problem to see when you know maps X something when a mapping stack it has a proper map to another mapping stack or something like this. Um well yeah I I, I don't think that this this is something general you could right so I think like if you were to take um, one p, so one and p tilde, which is just so this this here has the map one and this also has a map that's one n. And if you look at the sort of the fiber over the trivial of one hole, you get a classification of uh, modulus spaces and p bundles, uh, and so that. That would be sort of the same thing if you just didn't have this second quotient. So that doesn't actually map properly to one two. Um, although if you take a quotient by by m, it does. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think that this is actually necessarily general fact. I think to understand why you should expect this to be proper is you should think about the name Booker and you know, think about what a not a not in description of this uh, uh, of, of, of this thing is. Namely, it's like you know, it's a question of whether you have a sublime bundle or a sub energy. It's like an SL two. I don't know. You are kind of trying to explain what happens. Yeah. So I think that's that's, that's an example. Yeah, that you can write out without this kind of not in formal, which makes clear why some things are happening. Sure, yeah, actually, that's a good, that's a good point. So, so, we can talk about SL2. Uh, for example, for SL2, we are getting for a Borel in here, um, you're going to get the, the moduli space of injections of line bundles. So, this is injections as the here chiefs of a line bundle into uh, uh, an SL2 bundle. Um, and now, so if you if you just look at the moduli one b, uh, if you look at this map fiber wise, you're not going to get any zeros. You know, embedding of effective mode of things that you're getting at. But you can sort of imagine that you have this situation where uh, sort of degenerates where you have to a, to a situation where you have zeros. And 
along with some fibers. Right. So I guess the takeaway is that the Tanakhian formalism is what lets you really see that the one's proper and the other one, the other one isn't. That that the one's filling in those sort of degenerate loci, loci. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not Tanakhian. Oh, the Yeah, yeah. This is the opposite. This is the more direct. But I mean, I mean, also a good a good exercise. I think you know why. Yeah, and uh, remember that has to do with you know, embedding the projector. Yeah, so you can embed like like you can embed what you want to be, for example, as the product of projective spaces, projectivizations of of representations, the group. Um, and if you look at the equations which are cutting out this embedding, you're exactly going to get um, sort of like. I think maybe another like similar example is like think about maps from the curve into projective space. This is not proper, but if you instead consider like the vector space mod jam, mm -hmm. right? That's that's what exactly what you're doing. I see. Space, yes. Right. Right. Yeah. So that compactifies. Right. Because yeah. your maps can degenerate to you can have a family of degenerate spaces. Right. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for. Okay, should I? Yeah. Okay, so, um, so one thing that was nice about the so again we have this projection from bun E tilde to bun M, um, and it actually can, so embed bun P into here through this this triangle of great mutes. And one nice thing about the map from bun P to bun M. That it was smooth. But uh, if you look at the, the map and the compactification of the bun M, it's no longer going to be smooth. Um, uh, however, there is something that sort of um, remedies the situation. Okay, so, uh, you know, bun tilde mapping to M. No longer smooth. But so table of three A one P thinks that this map is smooth. I'll explain what that means in here. So I should say that. J, and then I said earlier, J is the uh, open embedding from what P is this one. Okay, so what do I mean by J or three that becomes the G thinks that this is smooth? So the precise terminology here is that this J or three of the constant G is universally locally acyclic. Uh, over bunch um, So precisely, a will retreat a bun e, and again, this is a result of uh, Robin and Gates' theory. Is ULA universally cyclic? So again, this is this is broader in the case, right? Yeah. Um, and so I'm not going to actually carefully define what it means to be universally locally acyclic, but I will say what the uh, relevant facts here are for us. Okay, so so this means. Take any E module on M uh, 
can look at your J or shriek on P, and then you can take the star tensor product. Uh, you know, SHQ, you tilde for star of F, and I'm getting defined by F, but so yeah, so Q, Q tilde upper star, uh, so Q tilde is the map from one Q tilde above M. Okay, so this is actually defined. So the star tensor product is you just uh, star pull back along the uh, diagonal instead of tree pulling back along the diagonal. Okay, so in general, this will be uh, a pro object in the category of D modules, but we're saying that part of being universally locally acyclic means that this is actually a well defined module. So, Uh, no, I'm not saying that it's separately defined. Okay. I'm just saying that if you, oh. this is going to be a pro object, now you can further go back along your deck. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, and then the second condition uh, is that, so there's a, a, a canonically defined map, which I'm not, again, I'm not going to define it. There's some canonically defined map from this. Uh, okay, star tensor product to So to the shriek tensor product, um, and there's a shift here, and this map is actually nice. So if if q, um, so for example, if q tilde happened to be smooth, and this uh, object here is, for example, the constant sheet, then this is precisely what you would get. You get the Q upper star is Q upper shriek of the thing. So this is what I mean by you know, J lower star, J lower shriek of the constant chief thinks that uh, this map is. Yes. Twice. Yeah, so actually, so sorry. Um, I always forget. So it's, it, is it minus twice the dimension or is it? It's twice the dimension. It's, yeah. Is going to be the the dimension of the one. Oh no, sorry. There it's it minus two. Yeah, minus two. Yeah, it's, it just depends on which. Thing. Yeah, right. Minus two. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So now we can actually prove. So using this uh, universal uh, local simplicity of this uh, Taylor shape. Of the constant chief, we can actually prove that this I tree is well defined. Proposition. Well defined. Proof. So uh, first show so we'll first show that uh J lower three Q upper star is um is defined. Okay, so in general, but the issue with this being well defined is that Q upper star might not be of, of some arbitrary Q module and on M might not be one no that, so it doesn't necessarily make sense to push it or do you think shriek along this open embedding? However, the claim is that because of this universal local acyclicity, uh, this 
push forward is always going to be different. Okay. So, uh, you know, you would upper star is defined because because Q is small. Then by the second property of uh, universal localistic acyclicity, uh, you can show that J lower tree Q upper star of F for any module F on M, but this is actually isomorphic to J lower tree K on P star tensor with Q tilde upper star of F. So the proof of this fact uses this second property of uh, universal simplicity. And I mean, to, to even begin to prove this, you need to know that the right hand side is defined. So this is really using both uh, one and two. Um, but the fact that this is defined and, and under that using two, you can show that it's isomorphic to the left hand side means that the left hand side must also be defined. Um, and so now, so now use properness. Of, um, okay, so now if we so just explicitly if I, you take shriek push forward uh, using p tilde this thing you're gonna it's gonna be the same thing as uh, shriek pushing forward by p. So that means that this functor here is one. Any questions? So um, <clears throat> I guess um, the, the, the IC sheaf itself has not been explicitly mentioned here, uh, or maybe I'm wrong, am I? Yeah, no, I, yeah. So I haven't actually mentioned the IC sheaf of uh, one, I will in just a second. Oh, okay. Sorry, I don't mean to preempt. Yeah. Yeah, but I, but yeah, I mean this. So, yeah, so I'll, I'll talk about the issue right now. Yeah. So, using until the we can. Find uh, a variant of this uh, ice streak. I'm going to call it ice streak star. Um, is uh, compactified. So explicitly. star f is just defined to be so you just use the the the, the ic sheaf of one tilde as a kernel um so it's going to be p star tilde which is the same as p of our tree okay i see fun tilde in the tensor use the upper tree Okay, so I don't want to talk about this too much, but the one of the motivations for introducing this function to begin with is that uh, so, so there's a fact here that this Greek star commutes with I think there's 
So in particular, it's going to set Hecate eigenschiefs for uh for M to Hecate eigenschiefs for T. Um, so so it takes and so explicitly, if you have a Hecate eigenschief with eigenvalue uh, sigma, you'll get a a, a Hecate eigenschief G. With uh, eigenvalue, you just induce from M to G, induce sigma. Okay, so if your local system was was something like a representation of of, of pi one into into M check, both sides. Yeah, so, so if your representation was, uh, uh, if your local system was something like a representation from pi one and m check, it would just be the same, the, the corresponding uh, representation over here would just be composing the map. So, we're, so this is sort of a way of, of constructing a reducible tech diagonal in the sense that they admit a reduction to uh, a parabolic curve. I can also mention the first slide. So there's a. I will mention also a relationship between the two. So is a. Monad acting so this monad is called mega, which acts acts on P M um, that Uh, I guess monad on D of one M, but it acts on Taylor right? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it should act on on Taylor Yeah, anyways. Um, so it has such. No, D of one M. That's like such that a Taylor tree divides into P is a module. Uh, and so the precise relationship is that you can take a bar, so a bar complex, the associated bar complex of the mega acting with the theory of the three, I see. Okay, and then the claim is that this is actually isomorphic to do I see what you do. So in some sense, in the constant is yeah. Yeah, so I mean the constant sheet is up there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this yeah, this is and then you know what So the claim is that uh I see quantum itself is actually quotient in some sense. Uh, uh, so compact by I see sense is the quotient. Sorry, how does it act? So, Taylor Shriek is an object of the Yeah, so I mean, so the claim is it's kind of like Say omega x on d of one p bar or one p sub bar. Yeah. So, so yeah. So actually, 
but this is since you have a, an action or disparity category, you can only go one button to the one. But uh, what I'm trying to remember is somehow you want to see omega modules in each. So yeah, so so omega should act on on modules on on M and uh, the claim is that Eisenstein series extends to a functor from omega modules and modules on bun M, P modules on bun G. So that's 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 the precise case. Um, but yeah, so omega, so there is there is a, a type in inconsistency here because omega, uh, there's also an incarnation of it which acts on the but yeah, it makes sense if we if we view Jailor Shriek as a as a kernel as like a puncture from D models on bun M to D models on bun G, and then it's meaningful to say that you have no add on. Right. I think that's the sense of channel action here. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, yeah, so I guess, so I guess really what this plan should be is that the function itself should be somehow a function. So in fact, by the sense, it should actually be, the function itself should be a function of the high street. So, okay, yeah, so the, so the difference is that in, in the principal case, right, uh, the configuration space, so this, this omega is sort of a D module on the configuration space. Um, and in the principal case, the configuration space itself actually, or D modules are it acts on D modules on the key. You have the algorithm that. In general, we don't have such a thing on one M, so that thing's sort of going to be But uh, in any case, look, this, so this this uh, precise relationship hasn't actually been established established yet. So this is a uh, work in progress by uh, myself and and you know, team uh, argument. So, but in the principal case, it has actually been established across the Yeah. So principal means that 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 parallel. So if we normally take a 10 minute break in the middle. Oh, is it an no. hour already? It's now a good time? Yeah. Okay, so let's resume at 6 or 3. Or sorry, 5 or 2. Okay. Okay, so um, so I remember I mentioned the constant term function from earlier, uh, and it was defined to be the right address that the symbol means uh, this is the left address or whatever I'm going to put on the right. So we had constant term star. All right, now in addition to to, to I shriek, uh, we could also define so we can define or have uh, some mu's here. So we can also define this uh, i's mu star. Um, this was this was p lower star, q upper street. Okay, so this is always defined. Right? So we don't have to worry about this being well defined. Um, and so now this is going to admit a left adjoint, right? So this uh, admits, well, again, we're going to run into some issues. So this admits a left adjoint, which I'll call uh, constant term new lower shriek. Okay, so again, it'll be pull push, but you, so it'll be uh, pull back with star. Let me just write it. The new is 
you will retrieve the other star. Okay, but now, so now we run into the same issue again. Uh, it's not clear that this is actually well defined, right? Because again, uh, Q is not it's not proper, so uh, it's not clear that it's that we can actually get a reasonable functor in this way. But if it did exist, it would be the left adjoint of I star. Um, so the existence of this left adjoint is the const is the content of uh, this uh, paper by Drew called Gates Corey. Um, and I'll just say it's uh, and tell Gates Corey and their paper geometric constant term functors. So the theorem is that this constant term will retreat you know, exist. Uh, and we can actually say exactly what it is. So it's the same thing as star constant term. But for the so I'm gonna put a minus here, and this means that it's it's star constant term. Uh, constant term or P minus where P minus is the opposite. So it's the parabolic opposite. So explicitly the way that, so the idea is to show that it exists. Uh, you actually just show directly that this is the left adjoint of, uh, of I star. Have an hour of it. Um, a little less. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, strategy. Um, so, so that CT, so the constant term, uh, but for the opposite parabolic, the usual constant term is left adjoint to I star for uh, our fixed parabolic uh, using gradients. I'll, I'll explain. So most of what I'm going to talk about. The remaining time is uh, so I'm just gonna so the review Brayden's theorem what it says um, and how one might uh, argue something like Brayden's theorem and then it's sort of a quick application so this this thing here is sort of a quick application of Brayden's theorem up to some level of extension. So let's talk about Brayden's theorem. So let Z be a quasi compact, or let me just say a scheme of finite type. Uh, with uh, a GM action. The GM is the well. I just have a, a, a finite type scheme and a GM action. Um, so we can define the following functors Z naught. So there's going to be a Z naught, there's going to be a Z, uh, uh, Z plus, there's going to be a Z minus. So explicitly, Z naught G, GM equivariant maps. Um, from a point into into Z, so where GM X trivial on the point, obviously, uh, and then this is going to be GM equivariant maps from A one to Z, 
uh, where GM X on A1 and B play by Charlie. And then Z, Z minus is going to be GM equivariant max uh, from A1, and I'm going to call it A1 and minus to Z. So uh, instead of acting on the sort of A1 in the visual way, just act by uh, inverse. Yeah. So you should think of this as sort of, this is fi the fixed point locus. So this is fixed points so of Z. Uh, and then this is the attracting locus. Of x points equals s, and then this is the sort of repelling. Yes. All right. This argument. Yes. It's an expansion. Yes. Yes. This would not be the repelling. Acting by definitions, tracking. Yes, yeah. tracking. Yeah, I mean, if you if you multiply by like one over something, right? It's gonna get smaller. It's gonna go. It's hard to act by one over something over here. It's gonna go lower. So if you get close to the origin, if you act by something small here, it gets get gets small, even smaller. If you act by something yeah. smaller here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have a diagram. Do not I plus C plus Z minus C minus all this P plus then I minus. Okay, so this is just uh, inclusion of fixed points. The attracting locus, inclusion of fixed points into the repelling locus. Um, and then these are just uh, inclusion of attracting locus. See, yeah. true that these are synthetic, like P plus and P minus are probably about the synthetic symbol. Um, yes, and uh. At least in the case where Z is, is in normal of the great variety, then these are closed and closed embeddings in general. Uh there's gonna be some so I think these are these are always gonna be representable by schemes as long as uh Z is a scheme, which I kind of am assuming it is. I think general gets where it allows Z to be uh in the public race. But anyway, so yeah, so under under favorable circumstances, these are local. Um, so, uh, for a Z normal, normal, uh, Tom Brady and Cruz, that I plus for star, I would say two plus for three, and I minus. Three goes with P e minus under star. So these are defined. Right? So this is so so first you star restrict to the repelling locus and then shrink restrict the fixed points, or you can shrink restrict to attracting and star restrict to, to, to fixed points. Um, and so obviously these aren't always going to be defined, but they are defined on the GM on a drama. GM on a drama category. So uh, where this is just you have GM experience sheaves on Z, and that invents the get whole function to uh, sheaves on Z, D minus on Z, and just take the essential image of that. So 
That's some category generated by the assembly line generator. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Right, so in general, it's not. Like you can have extensions of equivariant things that are not actually equivariant, but they are. Okay, so, so the, the point is that this is actually defined as long as your Z modules are hydromic. And in that case, in that situation, uh, oh, over. So moreover, look at this I minus upper tree, and this is actually going to be the uh, Q minus lower tree. So it's going to be as much as Q minus lower tree, and also a Q is in just a second. And if you take I plus upper star, it's actually a more Q plus lower star. And so Q minus, so in general, we have uh, 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 maps like this in the other direction, right? So you can think of this as contracting down to the fixed point. Yes. Um, and the claim is that actually pulling back along the inclusion is the same as pushing forward along the projection or GM on the things. things. Um, and now, Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I missed a, a really important. <laughs> uh, so sorry. So these are so these are defined. Oh, I should have erased that. And isomorphic to each other. Um, that was I don't know. That's three was. Oh, sorry. Okay, so the point is that uh, there's two ways to get to take a GM monodromic sheaf on Z and produce a sheaf on uh, Z naught. Um, and for for monodromic things, they actually. So what is monod So monodromic means so you can take. GM equivariant sheaves on Z that admits a forget functor uh, to down to Z. Okay. And so now you can take the essential image of this here. You can take uh, the category generated up to full limits of that essential image, and that's the GM that I'm going Practice looks like extensions of GM equivariant things. So you can imagine if you had like a sheaf on GM that's like was monodrum, it was like a unit book block or something like that, that would be monodrum. Mm. It's a bunch of extensions of the trivial global system. Mm. All right. Now, since um, you mind it's it's what we treat with uh, the minus. Star. So this is actually the left adjoint, so P minus or star over P minus tree. Uh, we can state this is a uh, gradient theorem as stated in the original case story. And actually, you can drop the, the normality of plus opposed with plus number two. It's the left adjoint to P minus or star composed to P minus three on uh, the GM on the Okay. So 
what we're saying is that you can actually so you can go from Z to Z nine by uh, pulling back and then pushing forward. And that's actually going to be left adjoint to pulling back first along the attracting joint estimate. Okay, so that that's and that's great. In, that's great in. So I'm going to say how one might explicitly uh, construct the unit and code. All right, so, yeah. so so the proof is not actually going to proceed by first identifying these functors. The proof is actually going to just be uh, explicitly producing the unit and code with it for this junction here. And so I'll, I'll say a little bit about how to get that unit and the code unit, um, and then uh, how that applies to our situation with geometric constant pairing functors. Constructing the unit. So this one is sort of easy. So we want to we want to construct so p plus composed with uh, p plus three. Uh, this is the left adjoint. So the unit is going to go like this. The identity on that's right. The code, yeah. Okay, so the way you do here is you set up the following. Um, maybe I'll draw it from the next. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to use the following diagram. You have uh, the fiber product of C minus and D plus. So this maps down to C plus, this maps to D minus, down to D. And then here, this goes to D naught. This here also goes to D naught. Okay. This is the identity. This composition is also the identity. Um, and this is P plus the prime. P uh, minus with the prime plus P minus it's Q plus and Q is Q minus. Okay, so now the point is one non trivial thing that you have to show is that this J is actually uh, an open embedding in general. So it's an open embedding. So I think under the assumption that Z is normal, it's actually going to be a equivalent. Uh, but in general, you have an open embedding. Oh. And now we want to understand what happens when you go. So first, pull back from Z naught to here, and then push forward, and then pull back again and push forward. And if you just use base change, you'll see that uh, you pull back that's the same as pulling back all the way to the fiber product and then pushing forward. Um, and the point is to get, you, you just use uh, the uh, O unit of the map, uh, pull push along this open embedding here uh, to actually produce this thing in an open there. So I don't actually want to write it out, but it's, it's just sort of a formal base change for this time. Using this fact that so the construction of the unit. I guess what's probably true if it's open is, or sorry, if it's normal is that J is the isomorphism onto well, some connected components of that thing, right? It's probably has some. We're thinking about the case of like for Z is P1, right? Mm -hmm. Z naught is two points. 
and that fiber product has like several different products. Right. It's a house GMAC in them. By dilations, you can make a bit. So it has the two, the two poles of six points. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then the attracting locus is like the union of A1 to infinity, disjoint union, right, right. and the locus is the opposite of A1. Disjoint union is incredible. Okay, let's see it. Okay, so yeah, so let's. Unit. Um, so, in general, if you have sort of quasi compact schemes, uh, so for quasi compact schemes, E1, Z2, then actually this generalizes to. Uh, QCA algebraic stacks. Uh, so what this means is a QCA just means that you quasi compact with affine stabilizers. Um, but so we're just focusing on the case where it's C1 and D2 or, or quasi compact schemes. Um, there's actually an equivalence between uh, continuous functors from D module on C1. E modules C2. Uh, with, um, oh, actually, I'm going to be able to say this might be, it's, it's the more obvious direction, but uh, E modules B. Right, and so the claim is that here, if you have some E module here, you can use it as a kernel sort of focus and just plug it Kernel is all right. Now there is a there is a subtlety here when we, we have people's um, what's the, what's called the renormalized whiteboard. I don't in the stack situation. In the stack situation, yeah. So. Yeah, I guess if, if yeah, so if we're in, in the scheme world, if we are, we don't do it. But actually, yes, yeah, so should I write out the formula for this? Or just say it's like PR2, R, PR1, or 3, F. Okay, so this is FQ. Some D module is just defined to be this thing. Famous for quasi compact teams is functor sending Q to corresponding functors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to construct, so, so, so the goal here is to using this result here to construct uh, the unit, meaning a map from the identity. The, this composition, it's enough to construct a, a map of the corresponding kernels. Um, so, keep on. Identity can see e north star minus u minus u for three. Close with plus lower star composed with P plus upper shrink. Okay, so uh, we want to identify the kernel for this thing. We want to identify the kernel for this thing. And we want to write down a map of the Okay, so the, the kernel, kernel for the identity, identity is what I'm going to call Q1. Which is just a, it's just basically you just push forward uh, along the diagonal of the dualization. Okay, and then for right hand side, kernel is 
Well, again, we, we use face painting. Okay, so if we just so draw the diagram, we just perform the diagram, C plus and then C minus, this maps them to C minus and C. Z. Okay, so now I put Z not in the center. Okay, so I look at I look at this Cartesian diagram, and the point is that uh, doing this again, my base change is equivalent to um, full push along the outer leg of this diagram. And in general, there's a nice formula for uh, the kernel of of such a function, full pushing. Along the outer layer, such a diagram. Okay, so let me just say what it is. Maybe two times that this P naught is uh, E plus times P minus push forward of the dualizing sheet on Z plus P minus over Z minus. Okay, so this, so this fiber product here maps the product. Of C and Z, uh, Z with itself. And um, the functor, the, the kernel representing the functor full push along the outer leg of this diagram is exactly giving that push forward of the best. Okay, so how do, now how do we get a map? Uh, so what we want to construct this unit, we want to map from Q1 to Q0. How do we do that? Well, uh, so the idea here is, the idea is we can look at the following space, A1, C, and C. Okay, and we're going to construct a D module, we're going to call Q, uh, over this space, and it's fiber, that one is going to be the kernel of the identity, and it's fiber at zero is going to be um, uh, this kernel here. And uh, it's, this is going to be GM monodromic, and there's going to be an operation going to use some, some version of like the specialization map on nearby cycle to construct the data map from Q1 to Q1. So, this is why this is one because it's going to be the fiber at one. So it's the generic fiber, and this is the special fiber. The map is pretty All right. So, so to do this, let's say consider A2. And write it in some coordinates and we can expect to be one and two. And this maps to A1, taking T1, comma, T2, T1 times T2. Okay, so the fiber over some non zero T here is just going to be some hyperbola, and the fiber over zero is the coordinate cross. So uh, there are sections of this map, uh, sigma one, and sigma two, from A one to A two, just given by sigma one T is just one common T, and then sigma two is just a T here and then one second coordinate. Now, find Z tilde. This is going to be a space over A1 um, by the following thing. So, you, so if you have some if you have some scheme over A with a map, some affine scheme S with a map to A1, 
a map to z tilde is going to be the same thing as map from A2, the fiber product of A2 and S over A1 into Z. So think of this as, as basically uh, uh, an S point of Z naught is uh, a map from S to A1. And then you look at a, a, a GM equivariant map of that family of hyperbolas uh, into Z. It's the bigger structure. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, so now the two sections, so the two sections uh, give a map. Z tilde at A1 times Z times Z. Okay, so the two sections each define a map to Z. Okay, and then we also have a, a tautological projection from Z tilde to A1. So all, all three of those maps together find a map to this uh, triple product here. Okay, so, um, so the fiber over one, so one times z, z is well the fiber, the fiber of this family of hyperbolas over one is just the well it's a copy of GM. Okay, so if you look at uh oh what GM maps? Yeah, sorry, this this should have been GM maps. So if you look at a GM equivariant map from a non-degenerate hyperbola into z, that's the same as just a, a formula of z. So the fiber over uh, one times z times z is just z itself, um, and the map the map here is uh, identified with you can identify with the diagonal map. And now the fiber Zero. Z. Well, the fiber of Z tilde over A1, uh, sorry, over zero um, in A1 is just, so, oh, Z tilde the fiber over zero. Well, this is essentially, this is GM equivariant maps. I didn't actually say. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So this is GM equivariant. Huh? Um, yeah. I didn't say how I wanted GM to act on A2. Okay. The, 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 sorry. So GM, the GM acts on A2. Uh, hyperbolically, and so lambda times t one times t two is is lambda t one, and the inverse t two. So the point is, is uh, it, it preserves the hyperbola, or sorry, the the degenerate hyperbola, which is the coordinate cross. But on one component, it acts by dilations, and on the other component, it acts by the inverse of dilations. Makes this map equivariant for the trivial action. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so, so so this is maps from A1 union A1 minus the Z. Okay, so so this is a push out uh, in the category of schemes. This is actually going to get to work with the Z plus uh, times Z minus over Z. So, and the map. Map the zero and z and z is just the usual map from the fiber product. Yeah. Okay, so this 
So now we can actually define our interpolation kernel. Um, maybe I'll call this map here. P e tilde. Maybe maybe I'll call it pi tilde because I had a tilde before. So pi tilde. So just define this u to be pi tilde chord of the equalizing sheet of this uh, tilde. Okay, so it's easy to see now by base change if you look at the fiber of this interpolation kernel over zero, you're going to be getting by base change the push forward of the dualizing sheet on this thing here. And then um, uh, over the egg, over, over one times e times c, by base change again, you're going to be getting the kernel identity. observation U is PM on the drumic. Uh, so there is a specialization of Actually, I have a version. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so the so dualizing yeah. But I, I don't actually need the experience. Specialization is very But yeah, good. Okay, so. Um, so, in general, what is this? I, I actually, yeah, I don't have time to define. Um, specialization map, but if you, uh, if you in general, you can look at uh, you have some space y, you can look at a1 times y and put a gm action on this thing by just acting on the left component, and then it contracts it to uh, zero times y, which is the section of the projection here. And so under, under uh, the following situation, you can define a specialization map, which goes for any GM monodromic sheet. So what we do okay. dramic, uh, we can define a specialization map which goes from the fiber of A at one to from Okay, and so the, yeah, I mean, for those who are familiar with the device, I can but in the specialization of the yeah um, that's that's the that's the thing we now I'm not gonna say anything about why this unit is supposed to actually uh, combine to give you an injunction but uh, you can It's easy to imagine. You just have to use it. It's a sort of a similar setup, but you have to use a triple product. And, so any questions about this before I say how this applies to? Yeah. Oh, uh, like construct. Yeah. All right, so 
So open from G, we have the following that I did. One P, here we have one line. And okay, so the idea is now you can you can fix the GM acts on this thing. Uh, basically, you choose some character, some co character of. Uh, of M, which maps to the center of M, and which contracts P down on M. Okay, so this this basically is gonna so one M is gonna be uh, in some sense our our fixed point locus for this action, and then one P is gonna be our attracting locus for this action, and then one P minus repelling locus. Um, so yes, the same. So the same co character which. Cracks E down on M also uh, repels P minus. Okay. Um, and so this diagram uh, in 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 case where is sort of terminology, this diagram is hyperbolic uh, in the sense that it sort of satisfies the conclusion of right and two. And so, of course, there's a there's an issue here, which is that these are stacked. So the, the whole um, yeah, the whole the whole discussion before was about schemes, but but uh, so what you have to do is you, you have to find you have to sort of cover this diagram by uh, a corresponding um, diagram like the one we had before. I guess the more the serious issue is that they're not going to back, right? It's not the QCI setting, like it's pretty much the same way, but then back to Yeah, so you should have some. Like, I mean, oh, well, okay, so there's, there's that issue, but then there's the other issue, which is like GM X trillion here. This yeah. isn't actually the attracting yeah. locus for uh, GM action on here. I mean, can trivialize the GM action and on one P. So it's so the, the, for me, I mean, of course, quasi compactness is an issue, but then there's a, this other issue of the fact that the situation to me just doesn't really resemble exactly the, the scheme situation. Is it something more like it's just it's smooth locally looks like that situation? Like it's the yeah. brain. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can cover this by schemes, which we're uh, uh, have them equivariant maps to this situation, but that one is literally uh, a, situ a situation like the one I was just talking about, uh, up to this issue of quantum compactity. Um, I can I can sort of point out how I can, I can cover this by schemes. So we cover. Schemes is for example one P, I'm going to say, and I'm going to uh, in notation here, and I'll say in a second what it is. This is this is uh. Moduli P bundles uh, with a trivialization on the N formal neighborhood of some point X in Parker X. Okay, and so. The, the GM action that we that we picked up there, which is corrected P on M, is going to act on this uh, stack here. And now, actually, this action is not going to be trivialized. So this is actually a scheme 
Um, and so you can set up a Have to die again. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. This is a this is a, a three dimensional diagram. So we can have one G. Uh, one e x here one e um X E X minus I have one more arrow like this. Okay, so now if you just look at this square here, this is almost, so these are all schemes. This is almost literally a situation in you know, which you can apply uh, Brayton's theorem. The point is, is that it covers uh, our diagram of stacks that we're interested in. Um, so the GM action on here, which, uh, and this is actually, this, this is our D, this is our Z plus, this is our Z minus, uh, and this is our Z naught. And this is actually, so up to this issue of positive compactness, this is the diagram that we were interested in before. And so now you can play this game with Bregan's theorem where you can deduce that the corresponding functors, which look like Eisenstein series and constant term for this one, uh, uh, you can you can get the adjunction that we wanted before, um, and then sort of conclude because this by descent that this because this diagram sort of smoothly covers this diagram that you can get the, the result. There. So sorry, I, that was rushed. That's it. What exactly is the role of M here? Like, can I take any of these words? Um, no. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's some stability property, but it, it, again, it, it had to do with technically, like, you wanted this to be a locally closed embedding. Um, and that only becomes, I guess, it only becomes a little bit closer to the next one. I have a question about Braden's theorem. Yeah. Um, is it? Is, is it viewable? Um, and this is this is sort of you know a slightly pre-digested comment that I'm regurgitating from something Professor Rosenblum mentioned to me um, as a kind of secondary adjointness. Um, um, is it is it really just another is it a manifestation of the secondary adjointness theorem or or is that is that not quite correct? I mean, I would say that it's the other way around. I would say that the, the second adjointness theorem is a manifestation of Brayton's theorem. Ah, okay, I see. So actually, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I think you can prove that these are really some work. Yeah, some data that they work. The gene is a yeah, it's a result. Did they literally use Brayton's theorem? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, in context? 
They also use this interesting boundary degeneration um, related to the sort of affine closure of G mod U. Uh, um, it's not something I understand very well, so it's something I'm just more curious about as a kind of a tourist. Oh, in the second address, yeah. Right, right. I think the, the way that, I mean, from a practical perspective, the thing about Braden's theorem is that it allows you to change streaks in the stars. And, like, right. th there's this whole, you know, application, but just in general, like, if you often are able to do base changes, otherwise, you would be able to do. The cool thing about this talk is we saw the other main way of doing this, just the ULA condition. Like, in oh, geometric yeah. representation theory, there's basically two ways to turn streaks into stars, and they both appear this way. Yeah, like the... What do you mean exactly? Like, is there an axiomatic thing you can say about a chain theory that we learn? This is not going to be true. The name one is positive. Okay, that was great. I mean, like, oh, here you need the fact that, yeah. like, a mod you're being used. It's not going to be true. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nearby cycles can be used as this, like, sort of like a generator for each one of G and S1. Yeah. Right. It's going to be a better. I guess that would be crazy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. Yeah. Is there a local version of this body of the other? Something that can build. Uh, like local version. I would almost argue in the local situation. Like, what do you think about, like, on B bar? Let's say you can, like, on bar, right? Is it's um, geometry behaves very similarly to uh, sort of the closure of the neutral semi infinite orbit inside of the G. So you can take this in a K orbit through the identity element of the G, and you can take this closure, and uh, this has very similar geometry to, to bottom one. So I think some, some of these things are. I know, I yeah, know I think it's the same. There's, there's also the Zoskis case. Yeah. They're locally in the spin of the quality estimate for the of these general spin magnifications, and they also they have some factorization factor on configuration space. It's kind of a funny hybrid between global and Yeah, it's like a it's like a it's a graded version of it's like S0 model. Yeah, yes, I guess that's it. Thanks. Thank you so much.